All right, y'all. Peace and blessings. God bless y'all. I'm Jarvis Kingston, and I hope y'all staying strong and solid in these times that we're in. I hope that you're taking care of your responsibilities and handling your business, and I hope that things open up for you and get better for you along the way as well. And I pray that you get through every challenge and obstacle strong and that you come out a much better person. Now, today's message I want to discuss about the homeless rate, you know, the housing crisis, the eviction crisis, and, um, you know, people needing a shelter. You know, I did a video, I did a message about homelessness, like in one of my first ever episodes starting this podcast, which was like last year. And I just talked about how the pandemic has caused all of this homelessness and um, all these things. And when you fast forward today to now, the homeless rate has increased at a much more higher rate. I mean, there's more people out on the streets more than ever. Um, you know, there's a lot of people lacking shelter, a lot of people lacking home, a lot of people lacking all these different things, you know. The housing crisis is very crazy because of the housing market prices and gentrification and inflation. So it's harder for a lot of people to keep up with their mortgage or pay all their bills. You know, a lot of people are getting laid off and getting fired or furloughed. A lot of people have been able to get their benefits or their promises. A lot of people have issues with their their funds and access to their money and their bank accounts and stuff. You know, these banks are acting weird and funny, too, and taking people's money and accounts. And also, you know... A lot of businesses are going um, bankrupt and out of business for good. So, you know, that leaves a lot of people out in the streets. And when you go out in your city, you see more poverty than ever before. You see more people kind of strung out more than ever. You see more people um, just really lacking a shelter, lacking a home. And it's very sad to see, you know, like, yeah, you give a poor homeless person some money or something to eat and all that. But at the end of the day, it's still painful to do that because of the condition that they're in, you know. We really shouldn't be tripping or complaining about much because we have clothes on our back. We have a shelter over our head. We have a roof over our head and we got food in our bellies. Most people can't say that right now. You know what I'm saying? This pandemic has flipped everything upside down. This system doesn't care about the poor. You know, the system is just very evil and wicked and greedy and corrupt. And it's leaving out all the poor people out. You know, a lot of people need assistance and help and food banks and all that. And sometimes... There's laws in certain cities and certain certain states where it's illegal to help poor people. It's illegal to help our homeless people. That's how wicked this country is. That's how evil this world is, where they legalized helping out the poor. When the word of God tells you that you should look out for the poor, that you should have mercy on needy people. Um, you know, and the government just devours the poor and leaves them out there. You know, sometimes the the police, they arrest poor people and just lock them up. You know what I'm saying? Now, in certain cases, certain poor people, they kind of do public indecency and stuff like that. and may cause harm and trouble. It may be violent at times. But other cases, certain poor people are harmless and just gentle and just want stuff. They just want a simple thing to eat. You know what I mean? And it's like nobody cares about the poor. The system just totally doesn't care about them. You know, they're totally trying to extinct the middle class as well. So nowadays, like you either have it or you don't. You know, a lot of people are balancing their their finances the best way they can. They're trying to balance their their funds the way they can and their living style, their living lifestyles and, um, you know, trying to live within their means. But it's very challenging out here with all this inflation and prices going up and, you know, bills and just pressure and things like that, man, and slow money and tight money. It's very challenging these times like this, you know. You shouldn't really look down on people or be judgmental or cri- critical about it as well because a lot of these poor homeless people that you see, they were once very successful at one point in their lives. They, they were, at one point, they were very you know highly corporate people like stockbrokers, all types of careers, all types of jobs they used to have, and they just lost it all. You know, things just happened. You know, it, it, those, thing, those things just kind of happen on people financially. You know, things just happen, man, like a twist of events and a lot of twists and turns, and they end up poor and homeless. They end up um, cut off from their family and friends. They just end up all alone, you know, and it's sad, but that's the harsh reality that we live in today. You know, the, the homeless rate has increased all over America, especially in the Bay Area in California. The homeless rate is crazy out there because the, the, the cost of living in the Bay Area is very expensive. Very expensive. So with gentrification and the housing crisis, it's going to leave a lot of people um, out on the streets, you know. And, and uh, I, I'm in Augusta, Georgia, you know, and Augusta, the homeless rate, the poor poverty rate here is crazy. 
You know, I mean, you go outside, it's always going to be somebody, you know, begging, asking for money. You know what I'm saying? It's always going to be somebody wanting something. You know, it's a lot of homelessness in Augusta, and there's a lot of homelessness in just every city. Chicago, Atlanta, New York, everywhere, man. Poverty is at a high, high, high alert. And it's like the politicians don't care about the poor. You know, the government don't care about the poor. You know what I'm saying? All these laws are basically against poor people. You feel me? So we live in a real lopsided unfair world a very lopsided unfair country we live in a very cruel evil wicked world man you know what i mean and it's 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 painful to see all these things out here you know what i'm saying it's very it it hurts a lot you know so you know man i just pray that anybody who is on the verge of being homeless or is on their like way out of there i pray that you could do your best to stay strong through your situation. You can f- try to find some help or assistance or, you know, you try to work your situation out, try to find help as much as you can any way you, you can. You know what I mean? Um, as violent as the streets are, this is a bad time to be homeless. You know, it's a bad time to, you know, be out in the streets because the streets is real cold or streets is real crazy. The crime rate has increased as well. So it's real disturbing in these hoods, man. It's real disturbing in these cities. You know what I mean? I pray that everyone could just keep working hard, keep paying their bills, keep staying on top of whatever they can, man. Try to get as much, multiple streams of income as much as you can. Try to invest, try to get a breakthrough financially, you know, try to live, you know, within your means and work within your situation. You know what I mean? But um, we have to really do our best to help out poor people. We have to really do our best to help them and try to reach out to them, give them all that we can within our means and, Have a heart and compassion for them, all right? So what I want to do is just let the poor homeless people know is that um, this world is messed up and evil and the system and the government don't care about y'all. But always remember that, you know, spiritually, you're wealthy. Spiritually, you're rich, all right? Through your conditions and through your situation, always have a relationship with God. Always stay prayed up. Always see God through it all. Rich, poor, whether you have everything, you don't have everything, always see God through it all, all right? Have a spiritual shelter, have a spiritual cover, have a protection hedge over you, all right? The kingdom of heaven is your home now. Let the most highest home be with you from now on, all right? So strive towards going to heaven. Strive towards doing the will of God through it all. Strive towards your relationship with God. Okay, know that God is the greatest, best provider there is. He's the best miracle worker there is. He is the He can do miracles and wonders for you. He can do breakthroughs for you. There's plenty of people that used to be poor and homeless that can give a testament of how God did stuff for them, how God did miraculous things for them, how God did wonders for them, okay? I'm not trying to sell y'all false hope and trying to give y'all just fake motivation, you know what I'm saying? So through your situation, always seek God, all right? So what I want to do is just read some scriptures, you know, provide the word of God, provide some comfort and ease to y'all, and just go from there. All right. The book of Isaiah, chapter four, verse six. There will be a shelter to give shade from the heat by day and refuge and protection from the storm, from the storm and the rain. The book of first Timothy, chapter six, verse eight. If we have food and covering with these, we shall be content. The book of Psalm 91, verse 1. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. The book of Isaiah, chapter 32, verse 2. Each will be like a refuge from the wind and a shelter from the storm, like streams of water in a dry country, like the shade of a huge rock in a parched land. The book of Psalm 9, verse 9. The Lord also will be a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. The book of Psalm 18, verse 2. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter seven, verse 12, for wisdom is protection just as money is protection. But the advantage of the knowledge is that wisdom preserves the lives of its possessors. The book of Psalm 91, verse four, he will cover you with his pinions under his wings you may seek refuge his faithfulness is a shield and bulwark the book of psalm 27 verse 5 for in the day of trouble he will conceal me in his tabernacle in the secret place of his tent he will hide me he will lift me up on a rock the book of psalm 61 verse 3 for you have been a refuge for me 
A tower of strength against the enemy. The book of Psalm 91, verse 2. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. The book of Psalm 18, verse 30. As for God, his way is blameless. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a shield to all who take refuge in him. The book of Psalm 121, verse 5. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The book of Proverbs, chapter 30, verse 5. Every word of God is tested. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. The book of 2 Samuel, chapter 22, verse 3. My God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my Savior, you save me from violence. The book of Psalm 119, verse 114. You are my hiding place and my shield. I wait for your word. The book of Psalm 31, verse 20. You hide them in the secret place of your presence from the conspiracies of man. You keep them secretly in a shelter from the strife of tongues. The book of Nahum, chapter 1, verse 7. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who take refuge in him. The book of Revelation, chapter 7, verse 15. For this reason they are before the throne of God, and they serve him day and night in his temple, and he who sits on the throne will spread his tabernacle over them. The book of Psalm 46, verse 1. For the choir director, a psalm of the sons of Korah, said to Alamoth, a song, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. The book of Psalm 118, verse 8. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. Ooh, let me repeat that. The book of Psalm 118, verse 8. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. Mm -mm -mm. Stop trusting this system. Stop trusting these politicians. Stop trusting these people. Trust in the Lord, y'all. All right, people will always let you down. Only trust the Lord. The book of Ruth, chapter 2, verse 12. May the Lord reward your work and your wages be full from the Lord. The God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to seek refuge. The book of Psalm 16, verse 1. A mikhetem of David. A mikhetem of David. Preserve me, O God, for I take refuge in you. The book of Psalm 73, verse 28. But as for me, the nearness of God is my good. I have made the Lord God my refuge, that I may tell of all your works. The book of Psalm 61, verse 4. Let me dwell in your tent forever. Let me take refuge in the shelter of your wings, Selah. The book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verse 7. Is it not to divide your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into the house when you see the naked to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh? The book of Isaiah, chapter 25, verse 4. For you have been a defense for the helpless, a defense for the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shade from the heat, for the breath of the ruthless is like a rainstorm against a wall. The book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 4. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three tabernacles here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. The book of Psalm 34, verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. The book of Psalm 37, verse 40. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. The book of Psalm 55, verse 8. I would hasten to my place of refuge from the stormy wind and tempest. The book of Psalm 46, verse 7. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Selah. The book of Psalm 142, verse 5. I cried out to you, O Lord. I said, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. The book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 15. Because you have said we have made a covenant with death and with Sheol, we have made a pact. The overwhelming scourge will not reach us when it passes by. For we have made false foot falsehood of our refuge and we have concealed ourselves with deception the book of psalm 62 verse 8 trust in him at all times O people pour out your heart before him god is a refuge for us selah the book of psalm 59 verse 16 but as for me i shall sing of your strength yes i shall joyfully sing of your loving kindness in the morning for you have been my stronghold and a refuge in the day of my distress 
the book of Psalm 5, verse 11. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy, and may you shelter them, that those who love your name may exalt in you. The book of 2 Samuel, chapter 22, verse 31. As for God, his way is blameless. The word of the Lord is tested. He is a shield to all who take refuge in him. The book of Amos, chapter 9, verse 11. In that day, I will raise up the fallen booth of David and wall up its breaches. I will also raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in the days of the old. The book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 3. The prudent sees the evil and hides himself, but the naive go on and are punished for it. All right. So just wanted to read that. Give them give anybody out there who's under harsh living conditions or struggling or poor and poverty or um, struggling going through it or who's homeless or having issues with housing. I wanted to just read those scriptures to y'all to let y'all know spiritually that the most high loves you. Okay. And that you need to keep your faith in him through any situation that you're in. And that understand that God is the best provider, not this man, not this system. All right. This system doesn't provide for anybody. This system destroys and takes away from us. Okay. But God wants to give to us, all right? We have to give our hearts to the Lord, you know? When it comes to the homeless rate and the housing crisis, gentrification, and all this crazy stuff going on, man, and inflation, it's just like the, the cost of living is just insane. The, the cost of everything is insane, you know what I mean? The system's just so lopsided and the economy so unbalanced, you know? And then I just be out and about, man. I see a lot of poor people. Well, I see I see a lot of people you know, just having tents and stuff, you know, like when people go home as they have tents and stuff, you know what I mean? They got their own little hideout, their own little place. So for me, I feel like more poor homeless people should be out in nature than in the streets. You know what I'm saying? I would rather want to see someone who is poor homeless living off the grids with emergency aid kit and being on some survival vibes and living in a tent off the grids in nature than to be just in the streets and the hood with the police and the crime rate, you, you know what I'm saying? So I would encourage any person who decides to live off the grids or who is poor or homeless, I would I would suggest that they should be more in nature, like around more rivers and more grass, somewhere where there's more like bushes and berries and stuff to like eat and drink, you know what I mean? Because I feel like that's more better for someone who doesn't have a home than someone who's in the streets, you know what I mean? Because if you out in nature living off the grids, the only thing you got to worry about is certain animals. Outside of that, that's just that. You know, if you have a tent and everything and some survival stuff or whatnot, but when people are just out in the streets, like where there's drugs and the cops and everything, I, I just think nothing good comes out of that because these cities are not building homeless centers, homeless shelters. They're not looking out for the poor, um, they're taking away food banks. They're, they're, they're just doing a lot of foul stuff, man. You'll be surprised what be going on in these cities and these hoods, man. You'll be surprised, man. You know what I mean? But, <clears throat> you know, you got all these cities, you got these mayors, these city councils, all these commissioners, and they don't do nothing for the poor. They don't provide nothing. Like, these, y'all vote for them. Y'all vote these people in these positions. They don't do nothing for the city. They don't do nothing for the people that put them in there. They totally forget about y'all once they get y'all votes. That's why you can't trust this system. You can't trust people in these positions, all right? Trust the Lord, the most high, trust his word, all right? This is why I always encourage high relationship with God and, you know what I mean? Because this world is falling away in a way. This this world, this system is pulling the rug up under us. You get what I'm saying? So we get more of our comfort zone more than ever. So our faith got to be hella strong out here. You feel me? Like super strong, super strong faith, straight up. So <clears throat> just, I just want to elaborate on that when it comes to the whole uh, homeless rate and the housing crisis and the eviction crisis and just the poverty going on this in the world, really. But especially in America, man. America got all this money, all 52 states and all this poverty. You got all these millions, billions of dollars. Allegedly, America's supposed to be the greatest nation, greatest country, and you got all this poverty, you got all these poor people, you got all these healthcare issues. The system is just so messed up here, all right? So, you know, it's very... Intense, you know, topic, but we're going to close out and just remind you how great the Most High is and His Son. You know, in the midst of all this chaos and craziness, praise the Lord no matter what, all right? Everything that has breath, praise the Lord straight up, all right? 
So just want to remind you how great the most high his son is. Hallelujah. He is the Adam, the advocate, the almighty, the alpha and omega, the amen, the apostle of our profession, the arm of the Lord, the atonement sacrifice for our sins, the author and finisher of our faith, the author of life, the author of salvation, the beginning and the end, the beginning of the creation of God, the beloved son, the blessed and only ruler, the branch, the bread of God, the bread of life, the bridegroom, the capstone, the captain of salvation, the chief cornerstone, the chief shepherd, Christ, the Christ of God, the constellation of Israel, the cornerstone, the counselor, the creator, the day spring, the deliverer, the desire of the nations, the door, the elect of God, Emmanuel, eternal life, the everlasting father, faith and true witness, faithful and true, faithful witness, the first and the last, the first begotten, first born from the dead, first born over all creation, the forerunner, the gate, the glory of the Lord, God, the good shepherd, the great high priest, the great shepherd, the head of the church, the hearer of all things, the high priest, holy and true, the holy one, hope, the hope of glory, the horn of salvation, the I am, the image of God, Jehovah, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus, the judge of Israel, the judge, the king eternal, king of Israel, king of kings and lord of lords, king of the saints, king of the ages, king of the Jews, the king, the lamb, the lamb of God, lamb without blemish, last Adam, the lawgiver, the leader and commander, the life, the light of the world, line of the tribe of Judah, the living one, the living stone, the Lord, the Lord, Yah, Yahuwah, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh ben Yahweh, Ahai Yeshaya, Yeshua, Shalom, Barakatha, our righteousness, Lord of all, Lord of glory, Lord of lords, man from heaven, man of sorrows, mediator of the new covenant, the mediator, the messenger of the covenant, the Messiah, the mighty God, the mighty one, the morning star, the Nazarene, the offspring of David, the only begotten son of God, our great God and savior, our holiness, our Passover, our protection, our redemption, our righteousness, our sacrificed Passover lamb, power of God, Precious cornerstone, prince of kings, prince of life, prince of peace, the prophet, the redeemer, the resurrection and life, the righteous branch, the righteous one. Hallelujah, the rock, the root of David, the rose of Sharon, the ruler of God's creations, of God's creation, the ruler of the kings of the earth, the savior, the shepherd and bishop of souls, the Shiloh, the son of David, the son of God, the son of man. Son of the blessed, son of the most high God, source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Son of righteousness, the just one, the one mediator, the stone the builders rejected, the true bread, the true God, the true light, the true vine, the truth, the way, the way, the truth, and life, the wisdom of God, the witness, the wonderful counselor, the word, the word of God, the word of life. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. So I just wanted to close out with that. I pray to God that whoever listens to this message, I pray that you get baptized, you start your life over for the Lord. I pray that if there's anybody out there going through housing crisis or issues with rent or, you know, mortgage or any housing issue, I pray that you put God first. I pray that you trust in the Lord with your situation. And I pray that you always adapt and always keep figuring out ways to help and fix your situation. I pray that you stay more responsible and sharp. I pray that you stay more sound financially i pray that god does a miracle and a wonder for you in your housing situation i pray that god does a breakthrough for you to find a stable home or a new place to stay i pray that god protects you and gives you shelter i pray that comp that god comforts you and protects you all right let's look out for more poor people let's look out for them because this system and the government don't care about them so we got to care about them hallelujah i'm jarvis kings i got much love for y'all god bless y'all peace